The O'Reilly Fact is on tonight. They paint this picture of, of white people hunting black people. That was Bernie Goldberg last night saying that the media will not tell the truth about violent crime and young black men. Tonight we'll continue the discussion with Alan West and Tavis Smiley. This guy looks like he's up to no good. He looks black. NBC News used that soundbite from George Zimmerman's 911 call, but it was edited, distorted, and now Zimmerman's lawyers say they will take it to court. Is it legal on the case? Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Violent crime in the media, that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. There is no question, no question at all, that the American media is not reporting the black-white crime situation accurately. Last night, Bernie Goldberg said this about the reportage. They paint this picture of, of white people hunting black people. Here's an inconvenient fact. Any time there's interracial crime, there's an overwhelming chance that the victim is going to be white and that the criminal is going to be black. Do you have a stat on that, Bernie? Do you have a stat on that? We'll have it tomorrow. And here it is. According to the FBI, between the years 1976 and 2005, the latest stats available, 91% of homicides on black Americans were committed by other blacks. 91%. Also, 14% of homicides on white Americans were committed by blacks, twice as many as the other way around. So the truth is that black men are not being hunted down by whites, as some hysterical commentators charged after the Zimmerman acquittal. But the lie was not challenged by the national media. In fact, the horrendous black-on-black -black murder rate is virtually ignored by the press. The reason is that any exposition of violence in the black community is bad for business. The liberal media wants no part of exposing problems in the minority precincts. Best to blame the white power structure and look the other way. 70% of black babies born out of wedlock? No problem. A rap culture directed at black youth that's violent and crude? No sweat. Rampant drug use in the inner city? Attack the cops trying to solve the problem. Same thing with carrying guns. Most liberals oppose the stop and frisk strategy that tries to deal with the gun violence. Big time TV commentators working on politically correct networks well understand that any skepticism towards minorities is unacceptable. And those in the race business, the Congressional Black Caucus, race leaders like Jackson and Sharpton, well know they'll be finished if they don't toe the party line. No matter what the evidence, no matter what facts are presented, the liberal line will be the same. It's society's fault. Past racial injustice is the real story, not present social chaos. It is long past time to stop the madness and hold all Americans accountable for their actions. George Zimmerman was held accountable. The state of Florida prosecuted him to the fullest extent of the law. But the evidence was not there to convict, and most honest folks know that. Zimmerman is not blameless, and his life will not be easy because of his mistakes. But the judicial system worked the way it was designed to work. However, the media system is not working the way the Founding Fathers designed. It is not an honest arena in the press. There is far too much money at stake for many journalists to tell you the truth. If it's bad for business, we'll spin it or ignore it. The result is anger, confusion, and a collapsing confidence in the American way of life. Many black Americans sincerely feel aggrieved, and some whites believe blacks are using the race card to portray themselves as victims. An honest media might be able to cut through all the bitterness and report the truth, but we don't have an honest media in America, because that would be bad for business. And that's the memo. Now for the top story tonight, reaction from both the left and the right. First up, former Florida Congressman Alan West, who joins us now from Washington. I'd like you to react to this statement from Attorney General Holder earlier today. There has always been a legal defense for using deadly force if, and the if is important, if no safe retreat is available. But we must examine laws that take this further by eliminating the common sense an age-old requirement that people who feel threatened have a duty to retreat outside their home if they can do so safely. Now, Holder, obviously wanting to do away with Florida's stand-your-ground law. And you say, Congressman? 
Well, Bill, it's great and a pleasure to be with you. I'd like to share this very simple and short quote with you that I really think will help our conversation. It says, there is a class of colored people who make a business of keeping the troubles, the wrongs, and the hardships of the Negro race before the public. Having learned that they are able to make a living out of their troubles, they have grown into the settled habit of advertising their wrongs, partly because they want sympathy and partly because it pays. Some of these people do not want the Negro to lose his grievances because they do not want to lose their jobs. That was said in 1911 by Booker T. Washington. And so when I think about what Attorney General Eric Holder said today, the stand the ground law was not a part of the Zimmerman case. As a matter of fact, I think that they're looking at an opportunity and not letting a good crisis go to waste. Each and every individual has a right to defend themselves, and I think that's what stand the ground law is about. And I live in Florida, and I understand that law very well. And I don't think that you can look at stand the ground law and see how it will apply to this case. And I don't think that there is anything that will show that you have a problem in Florida or some 22 other states that have laws similar to that. All right. Now, Holder is an interesting guy because he's a political activist disguised as the Attorney General of the United States. And there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. Eric Holder enforces the laws that he likes, and he goes after the laws that he doesn't like. When you have a situation like that, where I would say most um, African Americans agree with Holder today, I mean, they feel that uh, Zimmerman uh, profiled uh, Trayvon Martin. They feel that he had a gun, Martin was unarmed, just had Skittles. Martin winds up dead, Zimmerman is acquitted. In their heart, African Americans, I think, sincerely feel that there was an injustice done to them as a, as a race. And how do you answer that? Well, the thing is that when you have a media which you talked about is journal has no journalistic integrity, which continues to promote that that story. That's how people are going to feel. Let's think about earlier this year in March when you had two black teenagers, one 17 and one 15, who shot a 15 a 13 month old uh, white baby, Antonio Santiago, in the face. You did not hear a peep out of the media. And last Thursday, you had a 17 year old by the name of Daryl Green who was found murdered in Chicago because he refused to join the gang. You did not hear a peep from the media on that. But I think it's, a, a, here's why it didn't, here's why this story blew up. The racial profiling aspect of it. That blew the story up uh, from a crime on uh, black, white, or white, black, or black, black, whatever it may be. The racial profiling of the kid, which many African Americans believe happened. That blew it up into a major national story. Would you agree with that? Yes, but that was something, once again, that was not substantiated by the evidence that was presented. And I had a friend of mine who uh, is a detective in New York City that just sent an email to me before I came on that said, last night in New York City, you had a black individual that shot a Hispanic. Now, was that because of race? Was that because of racial profiling? But it's a different situation because this situation was one unarmed teenager walking, looking a certain way. He looked a certain okay. way, and that piqued the interest of Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch guy, because he was just basically looking at him saying, you know what, I don't know this guy. We've had a bunch of burglaries. I'm going to call 911. But he did it because of the way that Martin looked. And that's what separated this crime, crime, there was no crime, let me, that, this situation, from the others that you mentioned. Well, I think that when you interject what is supposed to be race, but we had an FBI that did an investigation, and my Miami Herald reported that 36 witnesses said that they don't feel that George Zimmerman was racist. And that's true. They don't feel that race was involved. But yet, when we continue to have people that are saying racial profiling, racial profiling, then uh, if you continue to promulgate that phrase, then people are going to believe it. No, that's and that's true. where the media comes in. Okay, Mr. West, I, th I agree with you there. Uh, the FBI did investigate. They found no racism in Mr. Zimmerman's background, yet the media continues to put out that line. We appreciate you coming on. Directly ahead, Tavis Smiley will reply to the Talking Points memo and to Mr. West.